previously on Sailing Bohemia. We sailed to the beautiful Bahia El Mestenia and enjoyed having the whole bay and canyon to ourselves. And we got lucky with the weather and jumped north to Isla San Francisco with the light breeze filling our spinnaker sail. Well, good morning and goodbye. We are leaving. We are totally out of here. The swell has came in overnight. It was not very pleasant at all. We were just bouncing up and down all night. So this morning at 7 a.m. We, we called it a day. So we're just gonna move to another anchorage quite close by and uh, see if it's any better there. There you go. These winds around here, crazy. Two days from south, two days from north, two days from the west. They can't make up their mind. So this is something we haven't done in a while. This is a purely pleasure sail. Uh, should be fun. We don't have far to go. We're just going around the corner ultimately to the next anchorage, but we thought while well, we've got some wind and a reasonably empty freezer, uh, we're going to sail around this deep channel here. It's very good fishing uh, with all our lines out. So uh, fingers crossed we catch something for dinner on the way. And it should be a fun sail too. This is the most swell we've seen in a while. Yeah, and it's really windy. But very pleasant, very warm air. It's really, really nice. My glasses broke. Oh, I'm going to be squinting for the rest of the season. I'm going to be like Harry Potter repairer. <laughs> Didn't you already try that with the super glue? <laughs> you need an eye patch. Maybe I could like a pirate. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's what it's for. Well, no wonder we're bouncing around in the anchorage. This is the largest swell we've seen uh, pretty much on the Sea of Cortez since we got here. Feels like proper sailing again, just when we're coming down the Pacific Ocean. It does have that sort of uh, feel. Big swells, strong winds, it's really nice. We are going to check out uh, the anchorage across the channel uh, from Isla San Francisco. It's called Cabeza de Mechudo, uh, which means head of hair, I think, head of long hair. It's a sad story, apparently. It's an old, uh, a former pearl diver who died there. Uh, but the anchorage is beautiful uh, by the look of it. We think we're going to be the only people there. I don't know what's going on with the fishing. I haven't caught anything now for about four days. No spear fishing fish, there just wasn't any, and um, my trolling lines didn't catch anything either. Maybe I've lost my mojo. How are you gonna get it back? I know. Have to eat the dried soy chunks again. <laughs> Tune in next week to find out if Peter recovers his mojo. We arrived to find the light southerly swell rolling into the anchorage but decided to spend the night to see if it eased up. It's a little bit rolly here. This anchorage wasn't quite as sheltered as we thought, but the spell should die down soon. We're gonna try putting the rocker stopper out and uh, see what that can do to fix it. Rocker stopper deployed. Looks kind of pretty in the water, doesn't it? Might catch some fish for you. <laughs> What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. We decided to move. Uh, we had a semi-comfortable night's sleep here at Cabeza de Machudo, uh, but I got the weather wrong this time. Uh, the swell was supposed to, to let up and so was the wind. It was supposed to change direction and neither of those two things happened. Uh, so you can probably see a bit of it now. It's really rolling into this anchorage. Uh, we are going to head to uh, our original plan A 
but it's just five miles across the channel here. There's a gentle breeze blowing, so uh, we're just gonna have a nice breakfast sail uh, over there and uh, see what it's like over there. We are squeezing every possible bit of the wind to make it across the channel. It's a bit rolly, so good decision we have left. Um, and it's really great that we don't need to be using our engine, that we can actually make it um, under sail, because in a few hours the wind's supposed to be all gone. Things are getting a bit tricky around here as well. Um, the smaller communities, the fishing villages where we planned to stop and buy our fresh fruit and, and produce uh, because of the coronavirus, they, they shut themselves off, understandably. Um, sadly, we are seen um, as the virus carriers, so um, all the small communities, uh, they put up signs, tourists do not come here. Um, so it's a bit tricky now because um, there isn't many large towns. I mean, the, the largest town now is um, probably two days away and even there's heavy restrictions to go ashore and buy food. Uh, so we are rationing now, especially on the uh, fresh produce. Um, so it is important that I keep catching fish uh, so that we are not depleting our, our provisions of uh, dried goods and uh, tinned food. Uh, funny times, eh? Little did Peter know, but his luck was about to change. Oh my god! Finally! Look at that! Poor Peter's had a dry spell recently. That sounds like a big one. <laughs> I think we're gonna be here for a while! <laughs> Problem is, this is really rolling for me, and I'm in the wrong part of the boat. I haven't even had my morning coffee yet! <laughs> we need this one, I hope I don't lose it. We have an empty freezer right now. Please let it be Mahi Mahi, my first one. It's big. I have for tuna again. But it's a fighter. Big skipjack, huh? Oh. Yeah. Wow. So the lure is back out. You never know. We may be up for a double whammy. Ta da! That's a big one. Yeah, another skipjack tuna. And the pink lure strikes again. I told you about the pink lure. Pink rules. <laughs> that would be lovely. We really are running low on fish, so we needed that. That's gonna replenish our bellies and the freezer. Beautiful. What a wonderful morning sail. I mean, today has been amazing so far. We've woken up this morning at around 8 a.m. We did that. Oh yeah, there is wind. Let's just go. Set the sails, call the massive tuna, and arriving in the new anchorage with a fantastic beach. Uh, in about 20 minutes so we're going to explore the beach and the mangroves as well so uh, it looks like it's going to be absolutely great day a second fish would be great not that i'm getting greedy It's quite deep here, we're going to have everything out today, uh, all 200 feet of chain. We have 200 feet of chain and then we have another 100 feet of, uh, of rope road uh, spliced onto it, but we don't like to use the rope, we're a bit paranoid just in case it's uh, a little bit weaker or gets caught on something. And so if we stick with the chain and the snubber, then we have uh, a backup basically in case that splice fails. And guess who made the splice? So it definitely would fail. Here's Bohemia's little fish filleting station in action. Yeah, this is my butchering station. I got to say, I'm so jealous of people who actually have a table, filleting table. But if Santa Claus is watching, <laughs> I, I would like to ask for a favor. 
a proper filleting knife. Mine is absolutely ridiculous. With the anchor set, it was time to explore the mangrove and cactus forests. We are paddling, saving on gas and getting our daily exercise. So at this on. rate, we're going around in circles. Yeah. Someone <laughs> is not pulling their weight. There you go, at least we can get 360 degree view. <laughs> we're just about still afloat. It's fast current. Looks like we're going nowhere with our little outboard and this current. We picked the wrong time to do this. This is a strong ebb tide and it's super shallow as well. But we'll get in one way or another. Mangroves grow in shallow coastal lagoons and estuaries throughout the world where they are protected from the action of wind and waves. The complex roots of the mangroves work to trap sediment inside the forest, supplying food to the mangroves as well as providing a fertile environment for other species to grow. Most of the mangrove growth is so dense that islands, sandbars and other features of the lagoon are completely covered. This dense vegetation in turn provides a protected nursery for fish and a vital nesting site for hundreds of bird species worldwide. Mexican giant cardon or elephant cacti like these can reach heights of up to 60 feet tall with plants living as many as 200 years and weighing 25 tons. Unlike most plants, cardon cacti do not depend on soil for their nutrition, but on bacteria that is distributed with their seeds allowing them to grow on sheer desert rock faces and other inhospitable environments. It was a treat for us to see these two very different forest habitats thriving within a stone's throw of each other and the anchorage. I think the current is actually faster than our outboard. It was worth fighting our way in here because we can get out for free. If only all dinghy rides were like this. Getting like three knots for free. <laughs> this is fun. Going sideways, but you know, figures can't be choosing. You can get better view. Now it's like wide water rafting. <laughs> Who's watching for rocks? Not me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is quite fast. I think it's faster than we can sail. <laughs> no trimming needed. No sails. Right, where are we going to end up? Uh, we want to be over there somewhere. Need to paddle quick before we get swept out. That way, I think. <laughs> wow, what a current. In this anchorage, we have entered the territory of noceums. Uh, these are really small, as the name suggests, little biting bugs. We're taking all precautions. We're going into full lockdown. Red alert is sounding right now. And fortunately, we've prepared these uh, before we left. So these are like special, uh, super fine netting and we've sewn some chains into the hem. Uh, so the idea is these will make little tents uh, for our hatches. We haven't seen any yet, uh, but if the name Noceum is anything to go by, then maybe we won't. Uh, we're just hoping to stay bite free uh, come the morning. Uh, so hopefully this will protect us.
in the next episode of Sailing Bohemia. Find out what our fearless crew made of a few tiny biting insects. They everywhere, they're so tiny, it's ridiculous. Pronto, pronto, vamos. We anchor at Punta Salinas and explore the old wow. salt mining operation. We get the southerly wind we've been waiting for and use it to make the jump north to Los Gatos. Special thanks in this episode go to our newest patrons, Terry and Chris. Thank you so much. And we've dedicated this perfectly shaped shot shell just to you. If you enjoyed this episode, then please don't forget to tell YouTube all about it by giving the video a like, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. See you next time.